Hello and welcome back to episode 4 of the Tower Defense Game Tutorial Series. In this episode we're going to be working on making uh, one of our defenses, or the only defense we're going to build in this series, which is the turrets. And we're also going to learn uh, how to place it on the map itself. So let's jump right into it. Alright, so just a bit of a side note here. Uh, as you can see, uh, the project tab here, you can see how it's all nice and organized. I did this a bit off camera. Uh, it's just so it can be nice and organized uh, for myself. I just did it. If you don't want to do it, it's all your decision. I just decided I would organize it because I like things when they are organized. Alright, so anyway, let's get back into the actual video here. So what we're going to be doing is right now constructing the actual turret itself. Now the turret, it's a very, very primitive turret. It doesn't look special. It's not going to have any good looks to it, but it's going to look, it's going to be basic. So let's begin. So we're going to be using the primitive objects that are in Unity itself. So first of all, let's create a cube. We're going to stick that at 0, 0, 0. Um, but before we actually use this cube, uh, let's create an empty game object, and we're going to call this the turret, because we're going to actually grab both game objects, uh, the turret and the top of the turret, um, and put them into this empty game object here. So let's move this empty game object to 0, 0, 0, the middle of the map, and we'll just drag this cube into there. Perfect. So um, I, what I also want to do is I also have made a few new... Uh, uh, what's it called materials yellow and dark gray for the actual turret itself so dark gray will go on the base of the turret and we're actually going to rename this cube to base there we go and then we'll create a second game object also a cube inside the turret also at zero 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 and we're going to call this shooter and there we go so this is actually its scale let's actually drag it up about one so it's just above let's make it yellow and we're just going to make it 0.5 by 0.5. Leave the Y at 1, but we're going to make the entire thing 0 0.5, 0 0.5. All right. So the turret now, we should be able to drag it up and down uh, throughout the entire thing you can see here. Oh, we can move it right there. All right. So now that we've created the turret, let's go ahead and make it so that it actually places on the map. So um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using this test cube right here. Uh, cube number 16 as our test cube. We're not going to apply the script to any other cube besides cube number 16. So let's do that. Uh, so I have cube number 16 selected here. Let's click on add a component, click on new script, and let's call this script placement. Click on create and add, and let's get scripting. All right, so now that we're in the script, let's get to making some variables. So our first variable is going to be called selected. All right, and that'll test whether or not we actually have the thing selected, and I'll create the actual changing of that selected variable in just a bit. Our second variable is going to be called turret. It's going to be of type game object. This top one is obviously of, top, of type boolean. And then the next one is turret cost. Now this we won't use until the future when we actually input cost into the game, but for now we're going to be doing that later. Well, not for now, but for now let's just leave it there as a, kind of a placeholder so we can use it later. Next, we're going to create a variable called placeable. It's also going to be a boolean like selected. It's going to test whether or not we already placed a turret there and not allow us to place a second one on top of the other turret. So it just cleans things up there. Uh, our second very our uh, second and last variable here is going to be called gray. It's going to be of type material. And our final uh, variable here is going to be called starting material, also going to be of type material. All right, so now that we've created all of our variables, let's jump into the start function. So here we want to make, make sure that placeable is equal to true. Since this is testing whether or not the pla placing is true, at the start of the game there won't be any turrets on our cube, so we need to make sure that placeable is equal to true at the beginning of the game. Next, starting material is actually going to have to have a material at the start. So we're going to get uh, the get component of this uh, of the turret itself, or not really of the turret itself, but of this cube here that we have this applied, we're going to get its first material. Now the reason why we're doing uh, specifically grabbing the starting material and not just changing it to any old color like gray is because of the checkered board effect that we've added here. So we can differentiate uh, each individual cube. Um, instead of having to change it for each and every single one, having just a starting material to instantly get it uh, works perfectly. All right, so now that we're back in the script, let's get into the update function and actually start this coding. So for our first thing, we're actually going to have the turret spawn uh, under a few conditions. So if, we're going to make an if statement, if selected is equal equal to true, B 
be sure that if selected equals equals to true we have this cube selected and at the same time uh, and if selected is equal to true uh, be sure that we press the letter T if we press the letter T and placeable is also equal to true and that's it we're just testing whether or not selected is true we press the T button and placeable is also true then we're gonna start spawning in the thing but before we're actually gonna get to the spawning let's make some new functions on making selected actually a, a real changing variable so let's start off by creating a new function called on mouse down this function will serve as a way to calculate whether or not we actually clicked on the cube itself and what it'll do is make selected equal to true and there we go now what we want to do is add on another function we're going to call this on mouse exit all right so now that we have this uh here we're going to make selected equal to false when we remove our mouse from uh, the cube and our final function here is going to be on mouse enter which is when we hover our mouse on top of the cube and what we're going to be doing here is grabbing get component dot render we're going to be basically accessing the render dot material and setting it to equal gray the little material here and now we also want to add something else to the on mouse exit we're going to add uh, basically the exact same thing as this here but instead we're going to change this to starting material I'll go through the entire script after we're done writing it so uh, now let's get back into the if statement uh, up here so what we're going to do is we're going to type in the uh, spawning in uh, line of code here that's going to be spawning in uh, the turret itself so uh, as we know uh, instantiates turrets comma and this time we're actually going to make this different we're going to make a whole new vector 3 and spawn it slightly above the cube of course so it's not inside of the cube itself so let's get started we're going to create a new vector 3 and inside this vector 3 we're going to have it equal to the transformed up position dot x of this uh, of this cube itself um, and on the transform dot position dot y we're going to add one because our turret is about one in size and when it's in the middle it's basically stuck inside of the cube so if we push it up one it equals right on top and I'll show you guys what that means um, what I'm talking about right when we actually test off the script so then finally we're going to type in transform dot position dot z uh, after that and then to finish off the entire thing we're going to type in a quaternion dot identity and this will handle the rest of the actual instantiating process all right and the final line we need to write here is that placeable is equal to false so that whenever we uh, instantiate the actual turret itself and we do all of this placeable will equal to false all right so now I'm gonna go over the entire script so in the start I already explained all of that and so let me go through this if statement here so if selected is equal to true which whenever you have your mouse down and you press the letter T and placeable is equal to true then spawn in that turret and then set placeable to false so that we can't place another turret on here and when we click on the map click on the cube itself selected will become true which allows us to spawn things in and when we remove our mouse uh, not when we let go of the mouse but when we move our mouse uh, so that the pointer is no longer on top of the cube then at that point make selected equal to false and change the material to starting material and finally when we get our uh, mouse on top of the cube make it so it's kind of have a selecting effect where when you hover over a item it actually like, changes the color so that when we have our mouse over the cube it changes it so it's a gray or a darker gray from what it already is all right, so that is the placement script. Let's go ahead and save it and get back into the game. All right, so you can now see that all of this is ready for us to use. So let's go ahead, um, first of all, I'm gonna drag in this placement script to the scripts folder. And let's select cube number 16. And let's start uh, filling in these variables here. So for the gray, we're gonna actually put in uh, our dark gray material here. Uh, same one as the base of the cube, as the base of the uh, turret. We're gonna be using the same one there. And then starting material doesn't actually need to be calculated. So we don't need to put, put fill in anything there. We can leave it like that. Um, and for turret, we actually want to make the turret object that we created earlier 
as a prefab. So let's drag that into the menu here. And there we go, we've created the prefab for it. Um, and now we can use it. So um, let's go ahead and delete our thing here. So it's no longer here. And let's select cube number 16 and drag in our turret from the project menu into the turret box here. There we go, turret cost. We're not gonna be changing with that and starting material, we're not changing that either. So I'm gonna disable maximize on play so that when we start placing things, you'll be able to see the differences when selected and placeable gets changed around. So let's click on the play button. And the game has started. So you can see now that if we hover over cube number 16, you can see that it becomes a gray color. When we let go, it becomes a white color, gray and white. So now we're hovering and you can see placeable is equal to true at the start of the game. And when we click on it, you'll see selected is equal to true. And then when we remove our mouse, select to become false. And now once again, we'll select, press the simple letter of T and the turret will spawn right on top. And you can see now that placeable is false and you can't do anything about it. I'm currently clicking right now and nothing is happening. So let me explain exactly what I mean when I added plus one to the transform dot position dot y earlier. So you can see here how it's uh, well kind of floating above the cube above the cube itself. So apparently one wasn't a good enough uh, estimate. I kind of estimated there a little bit. So let's start modifying that script just a little bit. All right, so let's modify this just a little bit. Uh, let's see, uh, you know, I actually want an exact amount. So let's go into the scene and let's drag in turret so that it goes right here and let's find exactly where, just about where it should go. So it's about at one. And considering that this here is about 0.25, is actually 0.25 off the ground, then we should actually be adding only 0 0.75. Let's go into our script and let's add 0 0.75. All right, so now when we actually play the game and select cube, this cube here and press T, and we go into the scene here, you can see that it's perfectly uh, situated on the cube and not floating at all. All right, so we have officially created the nice placement script. Finally, what we're going to do at the end uh, for this episode here is we're going to add the actual placement script uh, to all of the objects, obviously deselecting the other script here. And then we're going to add in placement. And then we're just going to drag in everything uh, while selecting all of them. So we're going to have to reselect them all here without the cube 16. And drag in dark gray once again. And now that we have every single cube with that script, we're now going to press the beautiful play button here. Let's maximize on play here. And you may now see that when we move our mouse on top of every single one of the cubes, they change their color. Obviously, because we have it so that when we hover on the cubes, they change their color. So now we can click on whatever we want. Let's say right here and press the letter T and a turret will spawn. And we can go over here, spawn in another turret. Go over here, spawn in another. We can spawn them in anywhere. Considering we don't have any costs or constraints on how many we can actually spawn, we can put in as many as we want, uh, but we can't put more here uh, because we have that placeable thing there in the script. All right, so there we go. That is exactly how you make uh, the turret, um, our only defense we're going to have in this series, and how to place it on the map. In the next episode, we're going to actually make the turrets shoot. Yeah, we're actually going to make the turrets so that they shoot the enemies. Um, and that is actually going to take a significantly more amount of time than all of the other things we've been doing. It's probably going to be the bulk of the actual uh, series. So just making you aware of that. Uh, we're about to enter that stage of the series. All right, so I guess that's just about it. Be sure to subscribe and like the video for more content uh, in the continuation of the Tower Defense Game Tutorial Series. And yeah. So thank you so much for watching once again, and I will see you in the next video.